The bold and the beautiful latest update, Deacon's explosive claim rocks Finn's world. Is Sheila alive? Deacon's jaw-dropping theory sends shockwaves through Finn's reality on the bold and the beautiful. Convinced of Sheila's survival, Deacon drops a bombshell, the body he saw had ten toes, unlike Sheila's nine. Meanwhile, Hope's restructuring of A Hope for the Future rattles Luna. Amidst secrets and suspicions, Finn faces Deacon's urgent call regarding Sheila's fate. As tensions soar, Finn grapples with Deacon's claims while Steffi's past comes haunting. Will Deacon's revelation unravel a sinister truth, or is it merely a wild accusation? Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, after watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The Bold and the Beautiful Spoilers, Deacon Drops a Bomb on Finn. The Bold and the Beautiful Spoilers for Friday, April 12th, tease Deacon taking his theory to a freaked out Finn. The Bold and the Beautiful Spoilers, Deacon Sharp is desperate. Deacon Sharp, Sean Cannon, knows what he saw when that body was moved into the cremation chamber. Whoever that was had ten toes as a human should and Sheila Carter, Kimberlyn Brown, only had nine so it couldn't have been her. He did his best to get the body out of there for proof, but to no avail. The flames were just too hot. Now, he only has what he knows he saw in his head but he has to tell someone so he goes straight to John Finna Finnegan. Tanner Novlin, and tells him that he believes Sheila is alive and Steffi Forrester Finnegan, Jacqueline McInnes Wood, had to have killed someone else that night in the middle of Finn's living room. Finn also has to deal with Steffi's million questions about the memorial. She wants to know what happened and what Hope Logan, Annika Noel, had to say for herself. She still can't believe that Hope had the nerve to go to that event, even if Deacon is her father. Maybe Steffi could have left Hope's relationship alone so she wouldn't have so much time on her hands. Bold and the beautiful spoilers, Luna Nozawa's at a loss. Speaking of Hope, she now has to restructure Hope for the future because Steffi couldn't mind her own business. Never mind that it was Steffi who insisted that Hope rehire Thomas Forrester, Matthew Atkinson, last year or she'd close down her line. Now, Hope needs a new lead designer and assigns Zend Forrester, Delon Demetz, to the task. He has been working on HFTF with her and Thomas for years and knows what he is doing, but he is no Thomas. To that end, Hope thinks Zen needs help so she assigns Luna Nozawa, Lisa Yamada, to work closely with Zen and be his assistant. Clearly, this does not sit well with Luna after what happened with Zen the night of Eric Forrester, John McCook, and Donna Logan Forrester's, Jennifer Garice, latest living room wedding. Will she speak up and say she can't work with Zend? Today's next update, Deacon stuns Finn with a crazy question, and Hope's decree throws Luna for a loop. Today on The Bold and the Beautiful, Deacon calls Finn to I.L. Giardino, Steffi remembers Sheila's shooting, and Luna wants to come clean. At I.L. Giardino, Deacon stops doing paperwork, sighs, and flashes to the scene in the crematorium. He mutters, it can't be. He rubs his head and groans. Hollis comes along and asks if he's alright. Deacon tells him, no, I'm not alright, Hollis. I'm not alright at all. Hollis asks if the memorial went as he'd hoped. Deacon says Hope and Finn showed up. Hollis muses that it's hard to believe Sheila's gone. Deacon mumbles, you're telling me. Hollis walks off and Deacon flashes to Sheila describing how she'd faked her death previously by cutting off her own toe. He sweats, are you seeing things? Or did you really see ten toes? Because if you saw ten toes, that can't be Sheila. Finn tells Steffi good morning at the cliff house. She says he should have woken her when he got in from his late shift and asks about the memorial. Finn feels like he got some closure and thanks her for being so understanding. You're amazing, you know that? Steffi asks about Hope being at the memorial. Finn says the memorial was eye-opening. He didn't realize how important Sheila was to Deacon, who's having difficulty accepting that she's gone. Steffi understands that the death of the woman who tried to kill them has taken a toll on Deacon, and on Finn. Finn's sorry he can't explain it, but the tie to Sheila was deeper than he realized. He was glad to get the chance to acknowledge what he lost. 
Steffi vows that Sheila didn't come between them when she was alive and she certainly won't come between them now. At Forrester, Hope assures Zend, RJ, and Luna that she's fine to carry on with the meeting despite attending a memorial yesterday. RJ asks about her dad and Hope says he's grieving. The way Sheila died was difficult to process when he believed she had changed. Zen's glad they don't have to worry about her being a threat anymore. Hope appreciates their concern, but she didn't call them there to discuss Sheila's memorial. She presumes they've heard that Thomas left for Paris. The trio lets her know they have and that they're there for her whatever she needs. Hope says that Thomas proposed again and she didn't accept, so Thomas left. She's not sure what that means yet, but the loss is significant. She'll need them to step up, rally, and work as a team. Zen tells Hope she's the heart and soul of this line and RJ seconds that. Luna's happy to pitch in however she can. Hope tells them they're brilliant and talented. She's excited about what they can achieve together, but they'll really have to step up. The trio expresses enthusiasm. Hope thinks it's time to give Luna more responsibility. She doesn't see this as a setback, but an opportunity. She envisions Luna working very closely with Zend. Luna looks ill. Hope tells Luna that she and RJ are a great team, but what they do here is different than Couture. Zend has his finger on the pulse of their collection. She's looking forward to seeing what RJ brings to the table, but Zend is more experienced and will take over for Thomas. She's not sure how things will work out, but she knows that hope for the future is in good hands. I believe that we will make the most of this opportunity. She reiterates that she'd like Luna to stay by Zen's side and work closely with him. I'm sure he has plenty of secret to share. Luna flashes to waking up in Zen's place and exclaiming, what have I done? Remembering that she told Zen she was keeping quiet to protect his relationship with his cousin, she shakes her head. Once alone with RJ, Hope hopes she didn't catch him too off guard with that. She thinks Luna spending time with Zend will be beneficial for her and her future. In the design office, Zend asks if Luna is okay, he had no idea Hope would have them working so closely together. Luna admits it's complicated. She's lying to RJ. Keeping this secret is killing her. The guilt gets worse every day. Zend argues that it wasn't her fault. Luna didn't know what she was doing that night, but she does now. She's lying. I can't do it. RJ needs to know what happened. He deserves to know the truth. At the cliff house, Steffi reiterates to Finn that she won't let anyone come between them. Finn says Sheila's death has been difficult, but they can finally put it behind them and move on. Right on cue, he gets a call from Deacon, who wants to see him and says it's urgent. It's about your birth mother. It's about Sheila. I'm at the restaurant. Please get down here as soon as you can. Finn disconnects and tells Steffi he'll go deal with this as fast as he can. He assures her this may be the last time they have to talk about Sheila. Steffi kisses him and he leaves. Steffi flashes to Sheila pointing a gun at her and gasps. At Il Giardino, Deacon pours himself a drink while muttering, it can't be. It can't be. It can't be. Finn shows up and asks what's going on. Deacon says this is crazy and doesn't make any sense. Finn urges him to take a breath, he's all wound up. Deacon gasps, you have no idea. Finn thinks this is normal, it's been an emotional time, but he has to put this behind him. Steffi has been incredible, but they can't forget the shooting. Whatever is going on, he needs to tell him so they can put Sheila behind them. Deacon wants that for him. Finn thinks it would be good for Deacon too. He did everything he could for her. Deacon, it's over. I know it's hard to accept, but Sheila's dead. Deacon asks, what if it's not, Finn? What if the person I saw being cremated wasn't Sheila? Thanks for watching this videos, please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.